Hey everyone, as part of my goal to make a series showing how a beginner can make a suit of gothic armour, uh, I've started on making a backplate. It's not finished yet. This is just where I'm up to while filming part one. If you are a beginner or you want to get into making armour, the free templates will be linked in the description of the final part of this series. So the uh, templates aren't quite ready yet, but they will be when I post the final piece. My goal for this is to make a uh, German Gothic backplate uh, to match the best plate that I'm doing. It's made in four segments. So got a matching backplate. Uh, I probably should have cut out a V section there, but oops. Oh well. Yeah, that's nowhere near complete. Uh, it's got a lot to go still. Alright, so before you cut your templates out, you need to size them to yourself using cardboard. Now, essentially, all I do is I get some cardboard boxes. They're free at a local hardware store in Australia called Bunnings. And, uh, yeah, trace it out, cut it out, and I dish it. So I get my plastic pelbeer's hammer and I dish the cardboard into my dishing jig, where you can use a dishing stub. This gives it a tiny bit of curvature to it. And yeah. then I attach paper fasteners where rivets should be, or sometimes you need a bit of uh, tape to help reinforce it because the fasteners don't really have a lot of strength. Make sure that the breastplate and backplate are sized to you correctly. It's a bit of fiddling around, but for this we're mostly checking to make sure that when it wraps around enough and we put a breastplate onto it, that breastplate mo uh, template's going to be heavily modified before we're done. So is this one, and the templates will be available in the description of the final video, but uh, Essentially, the main thing we're looking for is to make sure that it goes all the way around with enough overlap, the proportions in it going around are right, so it's not like the breastplate makes up way too much, or the backplate makes up way too much, um, and uh, making sure that the uh, natural waist, which is about three quarters of an inch above the bottom of the bottom lane of the top half of the backplate, so you've got your backplate and then the fold. Uh, that's going to be turned out and creased, so it's going to be bent out. So about an qu three quarters of an inch to an inch above that is where it should be sitting at your natural waist. And making sure it's not sticking up too high. But don't be afraid to uh, change some of these dimensions in the process of sculpting it uh, in steel. It's not as simple as making clothing where you just have a template and you cut it out and it's good to go. This, the template, is just a starting point. It gets you close, but you've got to be able to, you know, you then need to sculpt and trim it and fit it to the actual human body that the armor is intended to. But, uh, yeah. These proportions aren't weren't too bad so I started but I ended up having to trim it a lot so yeah that's the basics of using cardboard templates all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be dishing in along the middle of the back but I'm going to be dishing the rest of it outwards that's so that the back plate curves in at the middle along the middle of your back but curves out a bit to go around your shoulder blades and so that it's shaped more like the well shape of a human back and then I'm gonna curve them around and attach them together with screws alright so I've given a quick once over hammering it down into my dishing die in the middle and flipping it over to dish the inside uh, to push it back out. It's given it even just a quick once over. It's got a bit of, now you can see it's 
got a bit of volume and curvature to it. Now I'm going to go over to my little anvil like object again with my plastic panel beater hammer and I'm basically going to just uh, go over it again just evening out all the ripples and bumps and stuff. And yeah I just wanted to explain that this is a two part stage of just roughing it out and on the dishing stump and then transferring it over to an anvil and working it from, yeah, from the, so, on the same sides but down onto an anvil like object that's flat and polished just to even out all of the ripples. I just wanted to give that quick explanation. Now I'm going to cut quite a bit of this project out because I don't like the idea of forcing you to watch me make every single hammer blow. I'm going to show you just enough so that you understand what I'm doing and get a feel for it. But I figured I'd give you a little bit because I know some people like that and I'm trying to find a good balance. And I know this isn't relevant, but which movie do you think has the better soundtrack? Lord of the Rings or Conan the Barbarian? Please leave a comment and let me know. Okay, so now that I've got one half of the armor with the curve that I want, I can use that and trace it out onto a piece of cardboard to make myself a jig so that I can make the second half of the armor match the first, keep everything even. to mark where I've gotten up to and have everything done neatly so that I know to only work beyond that point. Now that I've gotten both halves evenly curved along the bottom, the piece is still twisted and crooked so I need to make sure that the rest of it is also even and straight. Looking for areas where it has not been worked evenly on either side and areas away from where we're working that are crooked and different. But I also sometimes have to just grab it and twist it into shape. And you can check when it's finally done by putting it on a flat surface. And also check that it fits nicely. Then it's a matter of shaping and dishing the lower lames in the same way, then going through the process of adjusting them and making sure that they fit the upper lames. And you continue this process down. We then attach the lame starting at the center rivet so that we can make sure that both sides are even. 
I'm using a quarter of an inch overlap so I drill the hole a quarter inch away from the edge and merge it up with a rivet hole on the upper piece that is also a quarter of an inch away from the edge giving us half an inch of overlap. an extra inch to each side of the pieces so that if I needed to I would have extra trim off or leave on. I like to mark a line how far in from the edge I want the second rivet hole to be so I can see it through the first one and mark it with a pen in order to make sure that the rivets all line up and that the pieces are nice and tight together. So yeah, you uh, follow all those steps uh, and then you do the same for all of them until you've made this, making sure to keep it even the whole way. Make sure to try it on to make sure it still fits you, though it might be a bit tight but that's okay. Now we're going to turn the bottom inch of it to get it ready for a fold. Alright, so I've uh, marked out a line that's in three quarters of an inch and now I'm going to curve it over this rounded off side of the anvil. Flared that out nicely and it's very comfortable, but after testing it again, the air cutout is way too high. So I traced it out and moved it down an inch. And now I'm going to cut that out with a jigsaw. All right, now that I've done a bunch of fluffing around off screen, uh, I moved that down an extra inch, so I took two inches off. Uh, if I'm being totally honest, I I'm kind of not great at doing um, cutouts. So, Increase the size of that cutout and uh, narrowed it in a bit more so it fits me. You know, lots of, lots of fluffing around, make sure it fits nice. Now, I test out the cardboard mock up of my template up for the fold, and when I'm happy with it, I then shape it in steel. The difference between this and the top half is I'm not pushing in the center. The whole thing is being dished out away from the body. And again, there's a whole heap of messing around, making sure that everything is properly curved and all matches up nicely. Because these screws are not where the final rivet's going to be, instead they're on a part that's going to be cut off, I can use it to hold the pieces in place and hammer them together to make sure that they fit really nicely. Alright, and here is where I'm going to end off with this part. Uh, when we come back, I'll be trimming the sides, rolling the edges, rolling the collar, and uh, doing the fluting and putting the finishing colour onto it. I'm going to be making this one peacock blue because, well, I want to. <laughs> I know that might be a little bit anachronistic, but um, you know what, who's going to stop me? No one. <laughs> yeah, this is how it fits. It's quite comfortable. Yep, I'll just have to 
take off the sides where it's going out too far. But um, yeah, I've decided to have a relatively short skirt on this one with the uh, short fold. If you want a longer fold, you can uh, add extra lanes or make the lanes larger. But I'm going with a relatively short one so that I can more easily sit down in it. And it uh, well, doesn't mean I'll have more of a gap at the front, but I can uh, protect that with tassets. So. Alright, so I hope to see you in part two soon. Alright, see ya.